Hello, my name is Sidney Nestle, and I'm a Jew active in my Jewish community, a dual Canadian Israeli citizen, and a member of Independent Jewish Voices Canada. And I'm here today to express my opposition and the opposition of many other Jews and non Jews in Canada to Bill 168, the Combating Anti Semitism Act. Bill 168 is scheduled for second reading this coming Thursday. Anti Semitism is a threat and it is growing in North America, and it is getting more violent. But this bill will do nothing to combat anti-Semitism. Instead, it tries to establish the IHRA working definition of anti-Semitism, a vague, misleading redefinition of anti-Semitism as the official Ontario definition of anti-Semitism, one that would guide policy going forward if it was adopted. But rather than focus on the major source of anti-Semitic threats and violence in Canada, namely white supremacism and right-wing extremism, Bill 168 tries to redefine anti-Semitism as any harsh criticism of Israel or support for equal rights for Palestinians under Israeli control. The proposed definition is itself meaningless. Let me quote. Anti-Semitism is, certain, is a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews, unquote. Virtually all of the definitions weight and import is in its attached list of examples. But seven of the 11 examples have to do with labeling criticism of Israel as anti-Semitic. For instance, example seven, if I were to claim that Israel is racist or that it was founded on the ethnic cleansing of 700,000 native Palestinians, I would be labeled as an anti-Semite under this new definition. And presumably, if Bill 168 passes, I could be dragged up in front of the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal for saying so. Well, let me tell you, I have lived in, I lived in Israel for 15 years. I served in its army, and I can tell you with no uncertainty that Israel is racist. And more importantly, it is not anti-Semitic for me to say so. Similarly, there is absolutely no historical doubt that Israel expelled thousands of Palestinians in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, expropriated their property with no compensation, and has not let them return. Saying so out loud is not anti-Semitic, but it will be deemed as such if Bill 168 passes. I could go on with other examples of how this bill protects Israel but fails to fight true anti-Semitism, but in the interest of time, I, I won't. You can read about it in our handout materials. Let me conclude with two important points. First, this definition of anti-Semitism is being promoted strongly by Israel's Netanyahu government and by, the, by Israel lobby groups in Canada and around the world, precisely as tools for suppression, the suppression of criticism of Israel and the undermining of the struggle for Palestinian human and civil rights. The Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, the premier Israel lobby group in Canada boasts on its website that, quote, the IHRA definition explicitly recognizes that anti-Zionism is a clear and unequivocal expression of anti-Semitism. Nothing could be farther from the truth. In other words, what they are saying is to oppose Israel's official state ideology, something that thousands of Jews around the world do is to be an anti-Semite. Second, the IHRA definition is an attack on freedom of expression and our charter protected rights. In the U.S., Dr. Ken Stern, the original author of the IHRA definition, has himself argued in front of Congress that giving this definition any legal status whatsoever is a threat to freedom of speech and will be a grave threat to academic freedom. In Canada, the BC Civil Liberties Association has recently issued a letter to the leaders of all four of our Ontario parties urging them not to pass Bill 168, as it is a clear attack on Canadian charter protected rights of freedom of expression and political speech in particular. Therefore, we, heard, we are here today on behalf of thousands of Canadians, Jews and non-Jews alike, to call on Ontario MPPs to reject Bill 168. This is not the way to fight anti-Semitism. Thank you for your attention, and now I'll call on Suzanne Weiss. Uh. Thank you, Sydney Nestle. Uh, uh, my name is Suzanne Weiss. I speak to you as a witness of 80 years of anti-Semitism. The words sal juif, dirty Jews, have echoed throughout my life during the Nazi occupation in France of my birth 
and in post-war North America where I now live. I was saved from Auschwitz, where my mother died. Tens of thousands of Jews, Romani and others in France, fleeing Nazi persecution, I was saved by a broad, popular resistance to the Nazi slaughter. Today, there is a new rise of anti-Semitism. In this continent, I'm deeply concerned by these echoes of the past, this growing danger to Jews and the entire Canadian community. This anti-Jewish threat is linked to racism and white supremacy expressed against Muslims, people of color, refugees, the gay and transgendered communities, and in Toronto's Young Street Massacre against women. The resistance in France saved me and so many more people of many beliefs and places of origin. Jews work together regardless of their differences over Palestine. We need such a united response today. Unity of all who reject anti-Semitism. That is hatred of people born into the Jewish heritage. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, IHRA, breaches this unity. It falsely brands as anti-Semites those who express criticism of Israel's governmental policies. It puts a gag on political expression. Anti-Semitism is not a political opinion. As every dictionary says, anti-Semitism is hatred of Jews because they are Jews. No government is immune to criticism. Israel is just like every other government. It deserves our honest opinion of its actions. Its rule is widely held to be marked by ethnic exclusion, discrimination, and violence. Let us weigh this reality through respectful, objective, and fact-finding debate, free from threats and suppression. Let us all stand together against the hatred of Jews and all forms of racism. Thank you. And now I pass the microphone over to Jim Turk. Thank you. Hello, my name is James Turk. I'm the director of the Center for Free Expression at Ryerson University. MPP Will Buma's a Private Members Bill, 168, begins correctly when it says, and I quote, anti-Semitism is a multifaceted problem that requires a multifaceted strategy, encompassing a, wide, a range of ministries and agencies. For that reason, it is desirable to require the government of Ontario to implement a whole-of-government approach to combating anti-Semitism, end quote. Our center, like any right-thinking Canadian organization or individual, feels that there should be no place in Canada for anti-Semitism. Unfortunately, the approach in Mr. Boomer's private member's bill, 168, wants to put in what it wants to put in place, the approach it wants to put in place would first undermine the fight against anti-Semitism and secondly is unconstitutional as is contrary to the Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Allow me to begin with the fact that Bill 168 would undermine the fight against anti-Semitism. It does so in two ways. It has a vague and confusing definition of anti-Semitism that obscures what anti-Semitism really is. The definition uh, in the IHRA um, uh, statement that uh, this bill would bring into law in Ontario says that anti-Semitism, I quote, anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews 
which may be expressed as hatred toward Jews, end quote. A certain perception, um, which may be expressed as hatred. The standard definition of anti-Semitism is quite simple and quite clear. As the Oxford English Dictionary defines anti-Semitism, it is, and I quote, prejudice, hostility, or discrimination toward Jewish people on religious, cultural, or ethnic grounds, end quote. But the RHRA definition that Bill 168 would implement confuses this by treating criticism of the policies of the government of Israel as anti-Semitism as well, making it far more difficult to identify real instances of anti-Semitism while casting a cloud of suspicion over nearly all criticism of Israel. Let me be clear, anti-Semitism is already illegal in Canada. It is a violation of human rights codes across the country that prohibit actions that discriminate against people based on religion, ancestry, ethnic or, uh, origin, or any other protected ground. It's also against sections 319.1 and 319.2 of the Criminal Code that outlaws hate speech against an identifiable group. But the IHRA definition that Bill 168 would bring into law in Ontario by adding criticism of the policies of the state of Israel as an indication of anti-Semitism, captures many uh, religious and secular Jews, as well as, who are not Zionists, as well as many human rights advocates who are critical of the Israeli government policies toward Palestinians, while at the same time creating confusion regarding anti-Semites anti like white nationalist leader Richard Spencer, who expresses fervent support for the current Israeli government seeing its discriminatory treatment of Palestinians as a model for white nationalists to emulate. The original author of the IHRA, as, as Sidney Nestle has said, Kenneth Stern, has come out strongly opposed to the use of the IHRA definition for legal or administrative purposes. He has warned that such a use will be a threat to both academic freedom and freedom of expression. This leads to my second uh, observation and that is that Bill 60, 168 is clearly unconstitutional, contrary to Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which recognizes freedom of expression as one of our four fundamental freedoms in Canada. By treating expression that is critical of the government of Israel as illegal anti-Semitism, um, I'm sorry, um, uh, is itself, in itself, uh, changes uh, what freedoms we have and would uh, do what Canadian courts and Canadian jurisprudence has made clear is protected in Canada, in fact, the highest level of protection of expression in Canada, and that's political discourse. So the purpose of this bill is to eliminate a section of political discourse clearly contrary to both our charter and the jurisprudence that has uh, come into place in interpreting the charter. For these reasons, we call on every member of the Ontario Provincial Parliament who is genuinely opposed to anti-Semitism to vote against Bill 168 when it comes up for a vote on second reading uh, this coming Thursday. The fight against anti-Semitism has to be taken up more vigorously, but Bill 168 will only impede that fight. Thank you. I'd like to turn it over to Aziza. Thank you, Professor Turk. I'm Aziza Kanji, a legal academic and journalist specializing in anti-racism. Bill 168, which seeks to operationalize the extremely problematic definition of Islamophobia put forward by the IHRA, not only threatens to chill constitutionally protected rights of free expression and dissent, as we have seen in other contexts where this definition has been implemented, including the UK and the US. By deliberately conflating criticism of Israel and Zionism with anti-Semitism, the IHRA definition also attempts to suppress activism and efforts to secure rights of Palestinians, who for many decades have been denied their most basic entitlements under international law, including the right to self-determination, the rights to life and racial equality, the right to be free of torture and arbitrary detention and arrest. While targeting Palestine solidarity, the IHRA definition does nothing to address the actual source of the extremely disturbing resurgence of anti-Semitism that we are currently witnessing across North America and Europe. 
manifest not only in extremists, um, individuals, but also with political parties that are increasingly becoming institutionalized and mainstream. The scourge of anti-Semitism is born of and is deeply rooted in Western societies and is connected to its other endemic forms of violent hierarchy, including racism, colonialism, and Islamophobia. Indeed, we see how many of the same factions that are currently attacking our sisters and brothers in Jewish communities have also put other vulnerable communities in their crosshairs, including indigenous peoples, black people, migrant communities, and Muslims. As we saw, for example, with the horrific act of mass murder in Germany just a few days ago, targeting racialized migrants at a shisha bar, killing nine. And so, Instead of adopting ill-crafted definitions that seek to pit our communities against one another, it is vital that we work on building stronger bonds of connection and solidarity between our communities in order to address these forces that are collectively imperiling us. Thank you.